How, yeah, how many man. times have you restarted your game so far, Vin, so you could get, like, uh, good fruits? I'm on my fourth save. <laughs> but it took me four times to get a, a fruit that I wanted, because I don't want to use apples or oranges, you know? Oranges are for a like, plebs. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I have oranges, by the way. Hey everyone, welcome to the Dallas Fuel Cast. It is a podcast we're kicking up as just just an idea. Wanted to see it through. Uh, given the current situation right now, we're doing it from our apartments, so it's a little scuffed, but we embrace the scuff. Um, so if if you know you hear the some of the random noises in the apartment, just know like it's a little scuffed, but we we're okay with it. So yeah, um, I think we're in exact like six feet apart right now. Yeah, like perfect, yeah, we, perfect space for social distancing. <laughs> we I'm angled about, ourselves I'm about six perfectly. feet apart too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're just on, yeah, on in, in the, the basement side of the city. I'm in, in, yeah. I'm in another city over. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So this this podcast is just an idea, um, just to kind of just have fun with it. We're not going to be really talking too much about Overwatch. It's just going to be, um, you know, us talking through. So let me jump into it. I am Arrow. Uh, head coach of the Dallas Fuel, um, and I have two guests with me. First one is assistant coach of <laughs> Vinny's. Like, yeah, I, I didn't tell them who I was doing first, so they had to guess. Um, first one is it's because he's the order on my screen. Yeah, this is going great. Yeah. This, is, this is going great so far. First one is uh, Tickety, um, also known as Louie. He is our uh, assistant coach for the Dallas Fuel, and our other guest is. Vincent Aremio, Vinny. He is really don't dox me, please. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he goes by Earns. Um, so you've probably seen him around. He is. Um, what is your official title? Vinny? Don't have one. Uh, I do uh, art stuff. Art like stuff. stuff. Yeah. He does a lot of graphic design um, and helps us a lot with uh, player streams and content and all that kind of stuff. So um, he's. Uh, what's interesting is we actually are all roommates, though not currently, but we actually all live in the same <laughs> okay. apartment. Um, I wish we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. because of you guys, but because the apartment itself sucks. Yeah, we actually got so we actually got kind of scammed with our apartment. Um, a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Catfish is the word I would use. I think sure. it. I think catfish is the best word <laughs> you could have used. It's a, I, think it's a, I think we can leave it at that too. Yeah, it was a good <laughs> learning experience, but the internet provider kind of scammed us, and the landlord kind of, you know. <clears throat> anyway, so the short version is uh, with the situation going on in Dallas, uh, we all had to go to separate apartments uh, to be able to work from home, um, and so uh, that is you know where where we're at now. All the all the our players are playing from home as well. We currently are. Um, scrimming from home, so everything, you know, with the full lockdown in in Dallas right now, um, you know, e- everything is going on online uh, for us, which is interesting. So funny, um, like, as you're talking about this, there's sirens going off. The yeah, <laughs> with the situation going on, you just open the window, it's just burning like, down yeah, in the background. Literally, like Resident Evil out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so everything's going on online. We're practicing from home. We're going to be doing our matches from home. Um, so it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting time. Um, but you know, we're embracing, uh, all of our opportunities that we have. So Vinny, how's it working from home? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty weird because I usually worked from home before we moved into a place that didn't have the greatest internet. Um, (laughs) but now when everyone's forced to work from home, it's like, everyone's like, wow, this sucks. Or like, wow, like this is so nice that I don't have to see people. And like, I can do <laughs> I, a lot of people are just like, kind of like, oh, I can do whatever I want while I'm working, you know? Mm. And I'm like, we can always do that. But I guess uh, people feel a little bit less confident at work when they're watching YouTube or whatever, doing their normal thing. You're talking about like the back office staff. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, Vinny, know. if the players were to do that, well, yeah, I'm not talking about play- players are <laughs> not even on my radar, dude. Those kids have to play the game on their single monitor, and if they do bad, then, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how we <laughs> operate here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Just take them out back. <laughs> uh, old Geller. <laughs> um, 
I, I, yeah, actually, yeah. I actually really don't like working from home. I mean, I, I, it, it's obviously necessary, but if I don't leave the apartment, um, like I feel, you know, cloudy, like I have to, uh, it just feels weird. I feel like I'm not as productive. Yeah. I've always, I've always been a super like big into work and home separation and like having, yeah. you know, if you have a home office, that's one thing. It's like, cause you can, you know. I always I hate having your PC next to your bed because it feels like you're always either working or you're always not working, right? And you're mm-hmm. just yeah. like, I can go sleep if I want to. So when we got our, you know, nice office in Uptown Dallas, uh, you know, that changed a lot. And they're just like, yeah, it creates like such a good work environment that you like yeah. never want to go home. Yeah, um, the office itself, it was just so badass. Like going in every day felt good. Like felt like you were part of something huge. Yeah, I and miss now we're it so much. <laughs> I, I miss it a lot too. And I'm just like thinking about it. One, uh, honestly, one of my favorite parts is just walking up to the office. Um, you know, you're walking through the plaza of the of the American Airlines Center, and it's really cool. You know, it's re- it's just a really cool part. It doesn't get old. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I love going in like the back door that's like right by the American Airlines Center, like walking by. It's like yeah. I'm just going in here, no big deal. Just like yeah. backstage into the yeah, usually when they look at me doing that, they're like, Oh, it's a it's a janitor going in. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, it's like it's uh yeah, when when you bring someone there for the first time, like a friend of yours or you yeah. know, like anyone, it, it's always a really good like first experience. Mm-hmm. It's like, wow, you guys work here. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. The real thing. Like yeah. we ordered yeah. so much Korean food that one night. And yeah, yeah. Like, because uh, we know the owners of this one place, and they came by and did a tour, and they were like blown away by it. They're like, uh, "Esports is a real thing." Like, <laughs> we, we, we talked about it, but this is unlike anything else we've ever seen. So, yeah, no, that's really cool. Even like, even bringing people that are already in esports to it, um, there's not many facilities that are like it. Yeah, like when um, we had the casters in uh, yeah. not too long ago, oh, and they yeah, were, yeah, yeah, this is like the best setup we've ever seen, stuff like that, yeah. which like. It is like honestly in North America, this is like the farthest esports has come. This is like the best experience you can have. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. I, I I'm really glad to to actually be like just to be able to work out of that office you know, yeah. every day. I, man, I actually miss it. <laughs> How many teams have you guys worked for? If if, if more than just this one, um, like I worked for Cloud Nine for a little bit. I worked for a lot of like uh, players specifically for a lot of orgs. But you see, like the internal workings of a lot of those orgs and it's like envy envy's always been the best i think cloud nine is is great too but uh envy's you know i think in the grand perspective of everything we've we've really been doing it right which i can mm. appreciate well, i've been i've been involved in three other orgs but i haven't um uh, it was all remote yeah so it's, this yeah. is the first one that i worked in person so yeah, I'm like so fresh into esports that this is like my first step, which is insane. Um, <laughs> That's a good yeah, first before, step. yeah, no kidding. Like before this, which yeah, like everything online, working remote or working with like schools, stuff like that. Yeah, schools are getting big though. Like some of those, yeah. some of the the collegiate orgs are like m- way bigger than a lot of esports teams, and have more funding, and have more like players and better players, right? Yeah, well, it's, it's such a such a good incentive for younger players to like be able to go to school, have a place to live and have like future career options while competing in esports. Yeah. That's what the scene needs for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The the apartment I'm staying at to cut you off. uh, (laughs) He he founded the, uh, the LSU esports. I guess, uh, is it an org or is it a club? But yeah, he founded this whole thing and they have like some, like a lot of funding now. And like I went and actually visited LSU and, and I saw that and it was it was crazy. Yeah. Like I wish I wish I had that in college. Yeah. I would have stayed. I, I would yeah. <laughs> I would I would really like to see the collegiates in, in all esports and all cool, games and esports yeah. take off because I mean, you know, if, when when I was going through that age when I'm I'm old for esports now. But you know, when I was going through that I didn't have that opportunity. You know, and thinking about it now, like, man, that would be so cool. Uh, and I'd really like to see it take off more. I mean, there's there's a, there's a handful of Overwatch teams that are collegiate teams that have that have gotten you know some notable players recently mm-hmm. um, that are working in the in the tier two scene. That it's really interesting and really cool. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd really 
be interested to see how it evolves. But <clears throat> it, it definitely makes sense, like looking at like where they're going to foster the player base. Because like, like when we first got into Overwatch and we were working together in contenders, like people were like either living in their parents' basements or like living off scraps for food because they weren't getting paid for yeah. for committing so much of their time to this uh, yeah. endeavor. And it's just like, there's no payoff if you don't make it. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I mean, we, you think about where we were when we first started. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was, I was working like 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'd be like 30 minutes to an hour late to scrims. I'd be messaging you like, oh, sure. <laughs> you know, we talk about this and this and this. And, you know, they'd go, uh, the players go through like the notes and the VOD review. And you, you, were, in, you were in Canada at the time. Right? Yeah, I was living in Vancouver still. Uh, that was right after my roommate like just dished on me and I was renting this like two bedroom basement apartment on my own, barely making rent payments, like living yeah. off like funds from my parents. Thankfully they were able to help me. Like yeah. looking back, like I have no idea how I was able to get through like that long of a time doing that and like how that's sustainable. Yeah. But yeah, like if the collegiate existed, uh, even like a year ago or a year and a half ago, like that's definitely where I would have looked to, to start up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, esports is weird when you're when you're first starting out because it's either you invest all of your money and time into it and <laughs> hope for the best, or it's like I, I guess for me it was kind of a uh an accident when you get into esports, you know? <laughs> it's like uh I, I I did it as like a I would always watch esports as a hobby when I was like ten. I would watch Halo on a I remember it was on the Xbox dashboard and it was like Meadowlands highlights and stuff like that. And, uh, and then I started doing like hobbyist Photoshop and like helping, you know, some of the streamers I was watching make some stuff. And then, you know, yeah. they happened to be the old man Tasmo, uh, reach out and be like, Hey, you know, we need some work done for this team that you've never heard of. And I was like, okay, cool. And like, I never had to, I never full committed to like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I want to work in esports. I'm, I'm going to give <laughs> everything I have to work in esports. Um, it kind of felt like that a little bit, but then I see a lot of these like players and and coaching staff and normal staff and other people do it. And I'm like, wow, you guys are really sacrificing a lot for this. And I'm like, I did this on accident, and I feel bad. But like, I, I definitely think having that passion and drive is super important. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, no, it's it's super important. And when I when I first got into esports in general, not even just Overwatch, um, it, that was back in. I first like really found out that esports was taking off back in like maybe 2011, 2012. Um, I mean, I, I always was involved in competitive games growing up, like Halo, and I did a lot of World of Warcraft stuff. But um, I was, I mean, how old was I? I don't remember. I was like 19 or 20. And Dota 2 was in beta. And like, so I was like, you know what? I loved Dota 1. I saw like this, this thing where they were, I don't even remember what it was. It was some tournament where some teams were pl- like playing in a tournament in the beta. And they had casters and all this stuff. And I was like, wow, this is insane. Like, I want to be involved in that. And at the time, this was like, a, a, uh, this is a crazy, a crazy time in my life. People probably have no idea um, that I was actually, um, I traveled with a public speaker. And uh, during that time, when when we'd be home from events, like I would watch esports and play Dota two, and like you know get into it. And after after I moved on from that, and I was working at Geek Squad and like just trying to make a living. While I was uh, part time in college, part time at Geek Squad, and I went all like put everything into Dota two, um, and I was signed to like some amateur like team that no one's ever heard of called Xin Gaming. And shout was, out to Xin. Shout out, shout out to Xin. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I was I was a hard support player. Um, it was like with the five position as Dota Dota players know it, and like it was this super shady contract that was like, oh, we'll pay you nothing, but if you make it to events, we'll pay for your travel. And we're like, oh, I mean, yeah, I can. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> take, of course, <laughs> easy sign of my life. Oh, X in game, let's down. go. Yeah, um, that team didn't last long, but uh, it was. It was fun. And yeah, so by the way, you probably will notice there's some beeping in the background. There is a, uh, a, a smoke detector that has a low battery that uh, we currently haven't been able to replace. So shout out to the landlords. 
appreciate that. We'll uh, we'll figure it out, you know. But for now, best people embrace we've ever it. met, <laughs> or ever not met, I guess. Man, yeah. <clears throat> just thankful. So, I'm just thankful for a few games that are coming out and came out recently. To so this trying time. Yeah. This trying. No, hey, this, this trying. Yeah. <clears throat> um, speaking of games that have come out recently let's talk about one that i know a certain person here has been playing a lot of i'm not gonna say who but someone here's an animal crossing fiend <laughs> and it's lewis labelle Wong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, yeah, how many man. times have you restarted your game so far vin so you could get like uh, good fruits i was oh, i'm on my fourth say <laughs> but i don't intend to go more than this it was a uh, it was a long night though because yeah i did the typical american thing on my first island and i uh shot down every tree and broke every rock and i was like well you know we've depleted the natural resources <laughs> time to move on to another place and uh yeah so uh it took me four times to get a, a fruit that i wanted I got cherries originally, and I think cherries is like ironically beautiful for me because I, I, I like keyboards a lot, and so cherry switches are important to me. And, you know, I was like, all right, that, cherries okay. it is. And so Bit of a took reach. Me, took, me four <laughs> time, <laughs> it took me four times to get cherries again. So I was like, all right. Oh, cherries are so meaningful to me. <laughs> like, oh. Special and place in my heart. And I, cherries. Well, the other thing because was I never keyboards. got peaches. <laughs> I never got peaches. So I was like, you know. It's lost already. Let's get, yeah. let's get cherries again because I don't want to use apples or oranges, you know? No. Nah, oranges are for f***ing like plebs. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I know he has oranges. Yeah, okay. So I have oranges, by the way. I, I started I started when I actually haven't played it in a few days, but like I, I played the first like three days, I think. I grinded that. Yeah. You know, I grinded it for like three days. I got super far and then I just kind of stopped. But oranges is what I had. Yeah. Okay. I I stopped playing. I have apples, coconuts, and cherries now. So I well, still need a couple others. You know, Aaron, but... if you ever want to come to my my island, uh, I have every fruit. Um, <laughs> I have bamboo, not to flex or anything. You know, <laughs> yeah, subtle flex. You know, I I can help you out if you need it. I caught <laughs> every timely uh, fish right now. You know, so mm-hmm. I'm, re- I'm ready for the reset, dude. The all I know, April is coming up like two days from now. Mm-hmm. to date this podcast um <laughs> but it's cherry blossom season in uh animal crossing so keyboards you know who i heard loves cherries <laughs> <laughs> <Lewis the Long. laughs> also got cherries right uh, no i got pears so that's oh. probably like the worst one to get i think yeah <laughs> that's worse than oranges <laughs> is it pears are i don't it, know they're yeah. pretty bland dude i a, mean a good juicy pear though i mean I'm not okay. hating on pears, but <laughs> aesthetically in the game, it's pears are probably like the, but they're probably the worst real. looking. Let, let's be real. Between oranges, cherries, and pears, pears are the worst for yeah. in, in the real. Whoa. <laughs> I, I don't know. Cherries aren't my favorite. Like <laughs> actual oranges like and not actual, like tangerines? Yeah. Actually, actual like real oranges. like oranges suck. No oranges are Oranges are good in cocktails. Tangerines are good and like nectarines, like the little ones. Those oranges are, are great. Are you insane? Yeah. Uh, oranges I, I, and orange I'm juice. This ain't it. No, <laughs> I, I agree with Aaron here. Lou, you're out of line. <laughs> yeah. What? The so, fruits are the best. So they have they have oranges and then they have smaller, sweeter, better yeah, oranges. Clementines. Yeah, yeah why would you it's ever the eat normal of oranges? Orange. <laughs> it's the same thing. Well, why would you eat basic oranges? Why not? That you can you drink you orange can juice have like Clementines. every day. Orange juice is good. Orange juice is okay. Orange juice has a lot of like carbs in it, but it's good. Carbs? It tasty. Are you sure? Yeah, pretty sure. Isn't that like what bread's made of? Uh, <laughs> yes, but I think orange juice has a lot of carbs. I would fact check that, but I have I'm no. Sure. I, yeah, I mean, because it's because it's lots. Usually, orange juice has lots of, lots of sugar in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. I guess. Yeah, sugars are carbs. carbs. Uh, I'm not wrong here. I had this problem because I was drinking a lot of orange juice as a child, and uh, and that you know you just it's not good for you. Okay, you need to drink water. Can't keep up on the juice. Yeah, my parents always 
We bought like the juice from concentrate and then like watered it down to like one fifth of its recommended serving. It's so like the frozen, <laughs> frozen, so like, yeah, the little frozen oh, yeah. cans. Yeah, so, like dude. break it up with a spoon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have yeah. to like you put it in the in the. Oh, I don't even in the picture. I, w- I was mm-hmm. poor as a child too. Don't worry. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the play. Also, yeah. I, I, down, because of okay. that though, I got to a point where like I would have like Gatorade in like in like middle school or high school, and I'd water it down, and people would be like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> and I'm like, "It's too sweet for me. Yeah, like, yeah. I need to water down Gatorade because I, w- I would get like the the powdered Gatorade mm. and like water that shit down. Yeah, so like, super, yeah, like barely taste it. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah 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 that was the go-to when i was playing hockey like any sport mm-hmm. really because you know i don't know you put yeah, yeah you get the powdered gatorade it's you big tub of powdered gatorade and then you take one scoop into your water and you'd be like this water doesn't taste as bad as normal water how do you okay. think they I, they filled those big jugs of like gatorade well, at football yeah games? i mean i mean sure <laughs> no they bought a bunch of gatorade dumped yeah, them bottle by <laughs> yeah, bottles <they> dumped, <laughs> into a little bottle it was 15 bottles for like oh. We we yeah. always got like whenever I played a lot of sports growing up, we and go. we always got like the off-brand Powerade that was like you buy in bulk from like Costco or something for like five cents a bottle. It just had like tons of it. It tasted terrible. But I never used powdered. I mean, I, I, the only powdered <laughs> drink. Maybe I maybe used, you should have. That sounds like <laughs> sounds like we need to enlighten him. Yeah. I mean, the powdered drinks that we had were like. Pink lemonade and lemonade mm-hmm. and iced tea, yeah, like, yeah, Kool Aid, like, yeah, Kool Aid, yeah, like Kool Aid, yeah, yeah. I never My, did. Uh, so I, I didn't, I didn't know Vinny. You played hockey. I knew you played football, right, Arrow? Uh, I, I didn't really play football in like a league. I played it in like I played pickup games, mm-hmm. um, but I played baseball, basketball, right, was- bowling. Um, that, that those were all in leagues, and then I played golf and and football, like in. Uh, Damn, got the, the whole Wii Sports and... channel going on. Yeah, I mean, I I that was pretty much I played that a ton um, because I was, so I, so I was a military kid, and in Alaska where I lived on the military base, um, because everyone didn't know anyone, like they would like make kids play in these leagues, right? And so I played like every sport until until i had this this happen mm. um and i couldn't anymore uh, a doctor wouldn't let me so <clears throat> but I, I broke it playing football actually in a, in a pickup game but i played everything man crazy yeah yeah it's mainly it's mainly hockey and baseball for me and then uh I played football for one season and got so messed up in it that i couldn't <laughs> play like most sports that i liked after it because it just messed up my knees and like yeah. out of baseball or out of 12 years of hockey and like 10 years of baseball uh the worst injuries i had was it was a concussion in each uh hockey's self-explanatory and then in baseball i took a pitch to the head damn um, but then in in football i like dislocated my knees like four times and Jeez. now my knees are just chalked like yeah not sick and it was one season and i was like this is the worst sport who <laughs> yeah thing? No, like b- baseball is like super low impact, but I did I did chip my front tooth playing baseball. I mean, I was I was a pitcher. Um, I played pitcher and and third base a bit, but I only ever hit players twice uh, with pitches, and so I was pretty happy with that. The worst one was like uh, just a tag on the hip, but out, 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 yeah, I mean outside of that, like you know, baseball is super low impact. But I, I playing football. Um, I broke my wrist. That, that's what happened. Is like I, I, it was just a pickup game. I intercepted the ball and I just got hit and landed on it weird. And so the, when, I, uh, when I woke up in the, in the hospital, because like I went to the hospital, they had to do a bunch of stuff to it. And uh, the doctor was like, look, you're, you're not going to you know, play sports ever again. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. yeah that's, that's actually, actually horrible to hear. Yeah. yeah. It sucked. I mean, because that, that was at a time where I had just moved to Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania is like the hub for Little League Baseball. Oh. Um, so I was in middle school at the time. I'd been playing already for like six years or something. And uh, I was going, I was doing uh, pitching training every, like, you know, multiple times a week. There was a facility where I'd go and pitch. And, you know, <clears throat> I, I learned how to throw a, a curveball when I was really young, which is really bad for your elbow. <laughs> Don't do that if you're young. 
and they actually made it illegal in in uh, little league matches to throw curveballs. Um, but yeah, but Lou, I know that you played some sports. What did, what all did you play? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in two separate towns, uh, but in high school I was in a town called Iqaluit in Nunavut, Canada, and that's like way the hell up north, and it's there's no trees. Uh, it's cold all the time. Like the air hurts your face kind of yeah. cold and can like give you burns. Um, so indoor sports were where it's at. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I played badminton a lot growing up for over 10 years. Uh, I competed like as a junior uh, all over the country and stuff like that. And yeah, I can't even imagine. I've never, I mean, I've never been injured or anything. There's no contact in badminton. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you might think it's pretty rowdy. Yeah, yeah, I killed the guy last partner. summer. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, one of like, uh, when you're when you're young and you're learning badminton, you have to wear goggles because the shuttle can like hit you in the eyes. Um, Say it by its full name, please. And my my coach told me this horror story that I'm like 99 percent sure is false, but he told us a story about a guy who got hit by a smash right in his temple and his eye popped out. Yeah, that was that's that so was fabricated. <laughs> that that was enough to make every kid wear goggles growing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. I realized this though. Now we we're all from cold places. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I spent most of my life uh in Alaska. So I mean I'm I'm used to that. And then Lou, you're you're from middle of nowhere, Canada. Yeah. And then Vinny. Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. I hate north. It. <laughs> I'm so glad we're <laughs> in Texas now. What north? Come on, uh, north I, I north of Texas, sure. North, north yeah, <laughs> the north. Lake effect, <laughs> snow. It gets awful. Wow, so, you've you heard of snow. Both. That's northern part <laughs> American. <laughs> all right, all right. It, Alaska is the What's wilderness. What's the coldest you've now. been in? What's the coldest like negative you've been in? Like negative sixty C. Okay. Well, I don't, 60, know. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> I don't I was know the conversion. 40 Fahrenheit. I was in negative 40 Fahrenheit, which is, that's the worst I was, I was ever. Yeah, that, that, that's about like, yeah, that's pretty. That's a normal day in Alaska, you know. Well, that's not normal. I mean, that's still like a cold day, you know. Yeah. But it, like, it was a rule in recess when you were a kid. It's like, you can't go inside until it's like negative 12 Fahrenheit. And so, like, they'd make us go outside and play. I remember when I first moved there, I remember being so cold because I, I literally, like, bundled up my little snowsuit and just laid on the snowbank, like, trying to keep warm. I was like... <laughs> Doesn't sound like how you keep warm. <laughs> just, yeah. I, was, I was in, like, you know, I was, like, eight or something. Just face down. Yeah, I was like... Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Dig a little hole in the snow. <laughs> yeah. Just you made an igloo in for recess. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. that's now, something we did in high school. Actually, we had yeah make excursions igloos. out onto the land. We'd take our snowmobiles and uh, kamatiks, the little sleds that they'd pull, and this they'd bring us out onto the land. Uh, and they'd give you a machete, <laughs> and you would oh, cut no. blocks into the snow. <laughs> no <Yeah>. way! <laughs> no. For a, for a while, they were letting kids make machetes in shop class nice. because that's that's what you would. Well, they called it a snow knife. They wouldn't call it a machete. <laughs> but, well, but, yeah. played, but you yeah. know, it's a snow knife. Yeah. They yeah. stopped that like while I was in high school. They like stopped doing that. <laughs> they like <laughs> they realized why that's a bad idea. <laughs> no, like people weren't misusing them, but it's like, yeah, it's probably a bad <laughs> idea to give all these kids weapons. <laughs> weapons and throw them out in the wilderness. You know? On a but, yeah, sled. They, they taught us how to like cut snow for igloos. I mean, I was awful at it. No one really knew how to do it when you're in high school. No. But you know, it's cool. Except it's, for that one passionate kid who was like really into it. And yeah, like, well, like there's always like there was like one elder in the community that came out with us, and they're just like in like half an hour built a full igloo, and we're like just chopping at snow with our snow <laughs> knives. Yeah. Now in 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 Alaska, we didn't ever get like formal igloo training. You know, I, mean, I lived on <laughs> I, then again, I lived on like a military base. You know, so it was kind of like, like your igloo certs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where like, you know, igloos would just be like tunnels in the snow and you just hope it wouldn't collapse. You know, like that, that's what we would do as kids. But they, they would take us out for, for gym class in, uh, in the winter. We would have to do, they would give us snowshoes and we just have to like walk around a field on like top of the snow. And the kids that couldn't like walk on top of the snow would get made fun of because they'd fall <laughs> behind because they'd fall in the snow. Yeah, that, 
Sounds horrible. Yeah. I'd I walk to my car and then drive home to my house. <laughs> that, was pretty, that was a pretty wild time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the salt really does a number on your car. But, I did. I we I did go ice Dang fishing. Training, dude. Oh, I did. I did go ice fishing a couple times. Like for school, they did like a you know, it was ice fishing once, and then there was one where like you go and you stock salmon in the river, or you go and like <laughs> you take all the little baby salmon and throw them in the river. And it's this big community event where everyone's just throwing fish in the river. So never did that. Okay, yeah. yeah I, mean, that's 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 like thing. <laughs> I just think of it. It's funny now because we, I don't know about you guys, but. I get cold so fast now. Like when I was living in Chicago, I was like, eh, cold. Uh, it's like seven, it's like 50 degrees out of shorts weather, you know, like I'll go out. It'll be fine. And now here it's like, it's like 75 degrees. I'm like, Oh, I need to wear a coat today. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I, I still, I still am a warm boy and I don't like the warm. Yeah, I like it cold. My I'm hands complete are opposite. Cold. Yeah, I don't know. My hands mm. are perpetually warm. Like I have really warm hands, but they're mm. not. I have really dry, warm hands, so they're never clammy. But like they're always hot. I and mean, that's it's weird. Yeah, I mean, not having clammy hands is good. <laughs> you know, no, I'd say. Like super dry. I mean, I mean my hands. Hand, my hands are cold right now. I can't yeah. even imagine having hot hands. Mine, Dude, mine are, it's mine, so weird. Mine are a little. I don't know. I always have hot hands. I, I had a problem when I played badminton actually, where my non racket hand would go like freezing cold and go numb <laughs> because my circulation's that bad. <laughs> like that my racket hand's fine because you're insane. you're swinging. Yeah. And my left hand, I would have to like wear gloves or like long sleeve shirts. It got <laughs> Dude, so we cold. Gotta, we gotta play badminton sometime. I'm like I'm yeah. kind of freaky at badminton. I'm a certified coach if you want to learn. <laughs> yeah. <I would> like <laughs> badminton from you. I played in like a like lesson number one is school, you like, can't pronounce it badminton. Yeah. You just can't. What did you say? Badminton. Badminton. There's an end. The You're missing the end. Badminton. <laughs> yeah, but you can say it. You don't have to like badminton. <laughs> I mean, dude, it's it's two rackets and a shuttlecock. That's all I know. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I played. Can... I played racquetball. I love the in clicking. high school. Well, that's racket the closest I've come to badminton. My dad oh. and I would play racquetball like, yeah. in the basement. It was it was a wild time. <laughs> Do you guys know the difference between racquetball and squash? Because I, I play squash. Squash sounds like a rich person. It's, I, oh, <laughs> it I, definitely I, is. <laughs> I knew, uh, I knew it's the played difference. in a glass box. Let's go play some squash. <laughs> I, it, it's, it's almost the same. I remember there's, there's like a little, little rule differences, and like, mm -hmm. it's, but it's very similar. I think it's like slightly different equipment too, like the ball itself. The ball itself is a little different. I think the rackets are a little different too, mm. if I remember correctly. But, but yeah, similar concept for sure. Honestly, yeah. all, all racket sports are pretty similar. You just yeah. hits. They hit the ball or <laughs> something. Yeah. <laughs> in a certain a way. Game. Tennis is a fun game. I dude, I, I could I never really got into tennis. Every time we I'd try to play, like I would just go full on like baseball mode and just try to hit the ball as hard as I could. <laughs> and and yeah. I'd be like It's not uh, always the way to win. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I had no finesse. Well when you uh, hit those overhead smashes, like oof. But dude, it felt good. Yeah. You know? You just hit it, and especially when you hit the person, the opponent, you know. That's, <laughs> Whoa, that's kind of <laughs> Mr. Yeah, I think you're playing a different game there. <laughs> In terms of like hitting, hitting things hard, I, I, I have always loved volleyball. Mm. Like, oh, volleyball is so very like, satisfying game. Oh my god! If you, I mean, obviously, there's two main components, right? It's either spiking it or blocking it, and it's like. When you spike yeah, there's a ball, there's nothing else. Well, I mean, I like serving too, but like I'm when kidding. you spike a ball, like oh, there's no feeling like it for yeah. sure. I, I played, I played a little volleyball, like pickup game volleyball, yeah, um, in high school as well, and that was fun. We like, I got, I actually got pretty good at it, but I mean, I, I'm a short dude, so like I couldn't actually spike or anything. Yeah, you know, I was like, like, yeah, yeah, we're I'm short. <laughs> I'm pretty short too in comparison to yeah. most people around here. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, pretty much. Texas has very tall people. Yeah, dude, it's because yeah. they're in this, this corn, dude. It's insane. It's the corn. It's, all in the, corn. it's yeah. the Texas corn. Dude, corn makes people grow. He's corn fed. That's the same with Illinois. Illinois has some big dudes, man. I'm like, I'm short and I'm six, like one, I think. And I'm short compared to a lot of people I know. Like, 
It's Did gross. you not eat a lot of corn growing up, Ben? Is that why? Like not enough, apparently. Yeah. I like <laughs> <Should it? laughs> so, same difference, right? Throw back the corn, man. <laughs> corn, Throw a little corn. more. Yeah, I don't know if that's happening anymore. I'm totally <laughs> I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Speaking of corn, let's talk about Smash. <laughs> I don't know. Corn like know like where like corn like Corin? Huh? Corin. Yeah, no one Smash. plays corn. I tried to play corn, but then Aaron's busting out the bailiff. Okay, Aaron. All right. First thing we're gonna say about Smash. Okay. Aaron Aaron <laughs> plays the most disgusting characters in the game. He plays Violet. Okay. He Who are my actual Politina. names right now? He plays Link. <laughs> like who does that? Who get? Ugh. Ugh, to be okay. fair, you get a little upset at anyone you can't beat with Little Mac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, okay. Literally I know literally like one, the, one of the worst characters in the game. I know he's Anyone bad. that that's... has a better matchup, you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, your char- your character's insane. Played. What do you mean you have moves in the air? <laughs> <laughs> I play three characters, okay? Little Mac happens to be number three. Uh, but... Number one ish is Cloud. Uh, you know. Oh, so I you're just, going back to Cloud. I think Cloud's my number one, but Crom is my number two. And Crom is probably my best one. Mm. And so Crom yeah. ca- kind of can recover and like yeah. has aerials where everyone else I play is like you hit them off stage, they're dead. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, I, I could, I should just get, I should just pick up uh, Palatio. You know? There you go. Best character in the game. Sol- solid pick. Oh, huh. just, just hey, one of the according, best. According to top that, three. That my yeah. nair hand. I got to blow on it. Yeah, I got to get my nair hand ready. That's that's my warm up. Is I'm like, I got to get my nair hand ready when I'm playing pal. <laughs> no, but um, I'm actually in the middle of an identity crisis in Smash right now because I don't know who my main is, and I'm adding new characters to try. So I've got Violet, Palatina, and Link, of course. But I've been playing a lot of Sonic and a lot of ZSS because they're really fun. Sonic is just so Sonic's boring. Dumb. What? <laughs> dumb. He's a boring there, character. There's actually a lot of mix-ups that you is can there? do. It's really interesting. Yeah, this is yeah. a Street Fighter. <laughs> okay, say that to Ken, Ryu, and Terry. Terry. Yeah, okay. Terry's a good character. He's awful in the game, but he's a cool character. He does yeah. cool things. <laughs> okay. Every character Lou. I play does cool things. All right, give us your <laughs> give us your character pool, Lou. Joker. I mean, why would you not play the best character in the game? All right, I I I still don't think he's the best character in the game. Oh, I he think, is one hundred percent. Joker with Arsene is the best. I think character in the he game. is played by the best player in the game. I don't think he's the best character in the game. With Arsene, Joker is the best character in the game. I don't know. He has and the lo- you can get Arsene like fifty percent of the time. His counter lasts for a literal eternity. Yeah, but if I grew up before that, the counter. At, at over. our level, his counter is hilarious because yeah. you could, I could just We're hold down B great. for like three seconds, yeah. and that just gets me back down to stage. <laughs> All right, dude. Oh, not wrong. <laughs> so I got Joker. Uh, well, I got Terry. He's he's not really in the top three anymore. I'm not sure who my top three really are. Uh, I also play Cloud. Cloud's cool as hell. And I recently picked up Sheik because oh. Sheik you can do so much cool shit with, but then just never kill anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like whenever I play a Sheik online, it's like, don't just hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. Yeah. I'll be like 90%, and I'll take two socks of them because I just <laughs> like do, yeah. I do one Smash. That's the deck. worst feeling. That's I actually like the worst feeling in Smash overall is like getting someone to high percent but not being able to kill them. Yeah. And Sheik is yeah. the embodiment of that feeling. And that's why I stopped playing. Like, I stopped playing Wolf pretty early because I couldn't figure out how to like kill, except for a smash oh. attack. And like, the thing about Wolf is like you can just use tilts as kill moves. Yeah. yeah, but it's like, uh, you know, so I, I started playing a lot of Wolf recently. I, I I forgot to add him to mine, but I actually think Wolf is a really good character. He's cool, man. When I, when Wizzy first started playing, I remember when Wizzy was in the office, he was playing me. Uh, I was playing, I think, Crom and Cloud and Mac. And he played Wolf, and he was looking away from the screen and four stocking <laughs> or three stocking me, and he did he did it four games in a row, and I will never live that down. <laughs> that he four that's, he three stocked me four games in a row, not looking at the screen. That's and, pretty solid BM. Yeah, yeah it really. Is. <laughs> it, it felt awful, and then I took a stock off him, and I was like, "All right, put the my job is done. Early, early retirement. <laughs> I'm out of here." Yeah, 
Well, that that's that's a pretty alpha male move to just not even look at the screen and just fight. Wizzy is the just most roll. alpha human being I've ever met. I mean, when you He's get to that dude. level of understanding of the game, you've got to just be able to like look at different situations and just understand what's going to happen. Yeah. Like the way just you can like read different players and just have that much game knowledge. It's crazy. I, I watched him beat like 40 people in a row, like in melee and just four stock them all <laughs> at, at, at a live event that we hosted here. It, yeah. was, it was disgusting. Like he was just sitting there talking to people. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's just doing these crazy, like, you know, just combos with, with Falcon on melee mm. off stage. Like, ugh. Yeah. It was terrifying. <laughs> yeah. I actually, so I, got into smash more i guess recently the actual competitive side of smash and i played smash 64 a ton as a kid but i never played melee never played brawl never played four um i only have played 64 and ultimate and so getting into ultimate and seeing the competitive scene i actually really enjoy the competitive scene i think it's really interesting and really fun it's actually such a unique environment it's so different Mm -hmm. It's cool because you, you can. I think each well, besides Leo, it's like each tournament is a different person, almost always winning, right, with a mm-hmm. different character. Even if it is Leo winning again with a different character, uh, <laughs> it's it's really cool though. Like you know, you get to see a lot of different matchups and and a lot of characters are viable when it's not just like yeah, you, you know, you're not playing. I know, like in melee, it's a lot of uh, Fox, Falco, you know, those characters, and when ultimate has a super diverse cast and you can be top five in the world with yeah. uh, everyone who's top five is a different main. It's really cool. Yeah. I, I definitely like that. It's, there's a lot of diversity in, in yeah. characters that are top. It's not just the same character. Like, I mean, you look at some of the top, at least in the North American scene, you know, it's like, you know, Joker and Wario and peach and, you know, all these different characters that I, I think it's really cool. It's really cool to see all the different matchups. Um, and just the way it's held, I can't imagine playing in that scene or like competing in that scene. It's probably really frustrating. Uh, such big you tournaments along all the time, and yet Every the practice day. is so different. Yeah, and it it it's really interesting. I I one of the things I said I want to do at some point is just go to a Smash event and like follow like one of the pro players and just kind of experience it all, you know, and like see. What kind of stuff they go through because in, in overwatch at least overwatch has gone through different stages i would say like where it was a lot used to be pretty informal but now like with overwatch they, it's very formal event you know it's very professional and very serious and when it's more of a grassroots scene it's different you know you have it's just a different environment and so I, I i'd be really interested to go and and you know i would say participate in but just be a fly on the wall you know, at a, at a smash in the smash scene, a smash event. Yeah. So, I think that's what makes smash and like fighting games in general too so much fun to watch is because like everyone involved is so into the scene. Like everyone in the crowd is there because they either play the game or they watch the yeah. game so often. And like the rivalries and the storylines you get from those kind of tournaments are huge because it's just like one on one battles that are just have so much hype and like shit talk uh, going on behind the scenes that lead up to these huge storylines. You get these awesome moments that it's just so much fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really cool. I, I'd really, I'd really like uh, to, you know, go check it out because uh, it's super interesting to me. Super, super interesting to me. <clears throat> yeah, so I signed, I signed up for Evo and bought a ticket and then didn't go because I was like, eh, I, don't, I don't need to go to Vegas right now. <laughs> I think it was it was during another one of those like travel weird times where it's like, eh, probably we should just work right now. Mm. Like, but I, uh, yeah. I really want to go to Evo. Uh, even though Evo is kind of shady with the prize pooling and stuff like that, but I I still think it's a really cool event and like the fact that you know there's like what is it eleven thousand players in a yeah, bracket it's mm-hmm. insane like uh, <laughs> yeah, that's cool it, I just wish they were competing for more money because it'd be way cooler but, yeah you know um, yeah yeah I can- and, and that's the only <laughs> that's the only drawback to the the fighting game and Smash community is that. I mean, Nintendo doesn't really care for a competitive environment, which is fair. You know, you have to look at it from their eyes. They want everyone to play the game and, and have a good time with it. 
It's just they could have so much more. (laughs) They could. They could have their cake and eat it too. (laughs) Don't. If they cared in the little, like, slightest bit about esports, man. Uh, What a different environment that would be. They they have the Nintendo Versus stuff, which happens once in a while. I don't really follow that one too much because. The settings are all weird, and like they have and they'll have like and final smashes and stuff. Actors from teen dramas show up and like play yeah. the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, but I, I, yeah, if I think it was I, a realistic esport, man, it'd be they could it, it could be as big as any other esport. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, it could be by far the biggest fighting game. Oh, yeah, easy. when it's it's one of those that it has a a huge grassroots scene, but it's not just from one game. Like you have yeah. like generations of Smash games that have been popular you know, for so long that I think that if they were to pump money into it, that, you know, it, it could get really big. And it's one of those games that it's like, it's not super graphic. Like, you know, it's, it's just kind of more of a brawly type thing. Yeah, very viewer um, friendly. Yeah. It's, it's super viewer friendly and it's really easy to follow. Like you can tell what's going on. That's by yeah. like, I mean, you can see on the screen, like, okay, this guy's like, obviously yeah. down three stocks to one, like he's losing. So anything <laughs> he does would be cool. Yeah, Ultimate seems like the perfect, like golden egg for that kind of environment too. Because like, if it's you were to, every like every character from every yeah, game, it's every of. Nintendo yeah. character, and yeah. like the the graphics and aesthetics of the game compared to to like Melee, where half the yeah, time yeah. like people are just wave dashing across the screen, you can't yeah, really tell what's can't happening. What's it's so on. fast, or <laughs> Brawl, where it's like so slow and there's only one character. Like right now, is like the time to invest in Smash yeah. Bros. Esports, but. Yeah. And it's really cool because when you find a character that you like from either, even if you don't play the game, you're going to recognize a character if you've played any Nintendo games in your life. Or any so like you, game in general. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you're even like, involved in pop culture, you'll know one character in, that, yeah. in, the, in the game. Mm-hmm. And, and like you'll be able to relate. Yeah, yeah you'll be and able then, to yeah, relate to it. It yeah. instantly gives you like a player to root for. It's like, oh, yeah. I know that character they're playing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think Smash is really interesting to me. I'd really like to see it grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, one of these days I'm going to compete in it and pretend like I'm good. Um, but guys, I'm not. Just a narrow <laughs> team that holds it. It's okay. We'll hold the locals here. We'll take yeah. them down. You know, if we were to play a tournament today, I don't know that I would play Palatina in it. I don't know. I don't know, Vinny. You keep saying I nair all the time. But I haven't. <laughs> I haven't hit I'm the more, nair. I, I don't like your. Uh, I don't like your Violet more than I don't like your uh, Palatina. So I think that's just because of the character, though. Violet's, Violet's so stupid. gimmicky. Yeah. Uh, Violet is not a character. I like <laughs> hitting you from across back. the stage for no reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, imagine having a projectile that just kills. <laughs> <laughs> imagine having an aerial that would kill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a <Crazy>. forward aerial. <laughs> With the longest yeah. reach of the game. Amazing. Crazy. Yeah. Did you guys see the, uh, the Nintendo Direct Mini? I Where didn't they... actually watch it, but I saw people talking about it. They talked about the new Smash character for the, the first character from the new so pass. Did they? Supposed to be they like. Say? So it's so like they, an arms character or something? Yeah, so they didn't announce what the character is or who it is, but they said it's someone from the arms franchise. What and they're all going to... That was like arms? one of the, the title the, launches for Switch. Yeah, it's we one where like they people have with like the springy arms. Boxing gloves with springy fighter. arms. Yeah. And to play yeah. the game, you had to use motion controls you, to like flick the joy cons. Switch and not know what arms is. Uh, I'm on my second Switch right now. <laughs> yeah, and it's don't know what crossing. arms is. Animal Crossing. I didn't even boys. play Arms, but like when I first got it, it was like Arms, get Arms. Yeah. Like, ah, no. Yeah, yeah. No. I was hoping it, it was gonna be Sephiroth, but you know it's cool. <laughs> hey, they got five more fighters in the past. Dude, if they bring Sephiroth in, uh, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Ooh. Okay. So who would be your top addi- addition to, to Smash? Arrow. <laughs> so- Tails or Knuckles. Oh, oh, gross. Oh, why would you say that? That would be man so Man picks up cool. Sonic for two days, what? and now he wants what? Tails and Knuckles. I, I just watched this. You made me watch the Sonic movie the other day. <laughs> I did watch the Sonic movie. And you didn't even realize there was a, a I watched spoiler it. at the end. I watched I it. I want in... Tails, man. I watched and Knuckles it. was cool. Oh, my God. I watched it again yesterday. Why? Uh, Is that like your fourth time? <laughs> I was. It was third. Third time. <laughs> Uh, I had some friends that wanted to watch it, but we forgot to watch the ending scene. Gotta watch it again. Oh my yeah. god! Gotta, gotta watch go the fast. whole movie again. Vinny? Gotta go fast. <laughs> gotta go fast. <laughs> <laughs> Zooming around the room. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because my, my favorite, I I think my favorite franchise of yeah. that is definitely the Zelda one. Okay. The Zelda franchise. I thought you were about to say Sonic, and I was like, 
okay, podcast over. But they they literally have like three links: Ganon, Zelda, Sheik. They have like, two Link, Young Link, and Normal Link. Yeah, yeah. they have three links. What what else? Could, who, who? What other character could they add? Like the from owl Zelda? from Ocarina of Time. You, you mean like, like a, like a like, first party? What well, what? Sorry? Or like from, from an existing franchise that's already in yeah, the game? Yeah yeah yeah. From a from a Zelda franchise, oh. I'm saying specifically. Like I don't even know what other characters would make sense to like to add. Uh, Azora. Azora or, or a Goron. They I could guess add. They, they uh, would probably the... do something from Breath of the Wild, right? They could so. add the Divine Beast. Yeah. It'd be oh enough. yeah. Well, Breath of the Wild two will probably be coming out sometime next year. Oh yeah. Well, maybe. So maybe some on, new character from that situation kills us all. <laughs> <laughs> The guy from the Jersey Shore I'm, I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. That game would be really weird. I don't think they can add any more people from Zelda. Because they yeah, have the three main characters. Yeah, And yeah. I don't think anyone else is more important than... There's like, not, the other characters aren't, like, big enough to warrant. Yeah, yeah they're not even in the game. Like, oh, you could yeah. add, like, Mifa. Like, but what would she do? You know? Yeah. She'd die. Like, it, it wouldn't be that oh, good. They could add, like, Budget Falco. <laughs> what was his name? <laughs> I don't know his name. The I call dude him who just jumps high, like Rivali, I think. Oh yeah, yeah Rivali. Rivali's Gale. Yeah. Rivali was awful. Like what a terrible character. <laughs> he was such a he was, pride ego, like pride yeah, ball. He was just annoying. He was literally just Falco, but worse. <laughs> he was Falco, yeah. but he was a dick. Like that's well, all that was, it was. That, that was Falco's character trait too. Yeah, yeah I guess. At least yeah. he had a gun. At least you know. Yeah. <laughs> this dude had like a bow and like died immediately. He had a gun. That makes him cooler. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah. he had a space gun. Yeah, he's cooler. All I mean, right? the, otherwise, Waluigi. Well, hey. see, the thing about that, the Waluigi is, since they're adding an ARMS character, ARMS is already uh, an assist trophy, like Waluigi is. So yeah. this might set the precedent for adding, turning like, assist trophies. I don't trophies care about Waluigi being in the game. I think they need more, like... You just want Final Fantasy characters. Yeah, yeah I, I know do. that's what you want. They should bring lightning in. She's cool. I have no idea who that is. I didn't play if, if any they, Final Fantasy. If they announced, lightning has pink hair. If they announced Final cool. Fantasy VII Remake for the Switch, that'd be a perfect time to announce another uh, ah, Final Fantasy that's character. Not happening. Well, okay, so in Final Fantasy VII, if that were to happen, yeah. who would be a character that you would Well, it would be Sephiroth. Tifa. It would be Sephiroth or <laughs> Tifa. Tifa's a brawler character. Okay. And like she'd be really good. Um, but like, it, yeah, if they had a Tifa, it'd be great. I think Tifa would be the like it, it would be Tifa or Sephiroth. Sephiroth's another swordy, but he could also fly, so his recovery would be cooler. And he would just have like the most insane reach, kind of like Violet has. But like Tifa would be like a little Mac kind of clone, but like could probably better because she could actually do things. Uh and probably can do things in air too, because it's Final Fantasy. Like cool. Yeah. Um but yeah, she'd be dope. Ah, oh, damn. Tifa would be cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. What about <laughs> I would almost say Tifa is my number one pick instead of okay. Sephiroth because yeah. I like I like melee characters. So like what am I? Oh. So Tails or Knuckles, but I th- I would want Knuckles more, but Tails would probably make more sense to add to the game first. Did you and see? Uh, they added <laughs> the kid. They added Knuckles to the new Project M update. Do you know Project M? It's like a fan made. Is that the remake melee? Yeah, yeah, okay. I've but like on the brawl engine, I think. Oh, weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Project M is like a huge thing. Like Will, one of our staff, he uh, he he goes nuts for it because one of his like old roommates like has worked on it. <clears throat> and it it um, used to be have the biggest competitive scene uh, yeah. before Smash Four started yeah, growing. So yeah, probably probably during brawl, I think. Yeah, mm. but yeah, it was basically just like a lot of the mechanics from Melee, but they added a lot of stuff. Okay, so Lou, your character. It's hard to say because the characters I want realistically won't like they're not going to add Goku. Like they just oh, won't. Okay. Yeah, like they Dragon have Dragon Ball, Ball fighters Z. on the Switch. Yeah, but they're not going to add Goku. But they could. You know how much they, money they'd have to pay for Goku? They could. Yeah. Go, that's I, no way hey, Goku or there, like Dragon you'd Ball. You'd be surprised, dude. You'd be surprised. They would because... definitely add Sora before they had Goku. Ugh. Sora. <laughs> I know I don't want Sora in the game, but they they would add him. They, before. they would add Minecraft Steve before, but like I I definitely don't think Goku's off the table. But like I think he is pretty off the table because of the the other characters that are in the game. The other uh, the other characters and the the competing fighting game franchise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, you're not like, wrong. That, that's why I don't think any Dragon Ball characters would come in, and I don't think any like Overwatch. Like Overwatch could happen, but I don't yeah. think Overwatch characters would happen. I don't think Overwatch should happen. To be fair, the only characters that would make sense in that for Smash, I think, would be like Doomfist, Genji, Tracer. Yeah. If if any. Reinhardt. Reinhardt. Yeah. I don't think it could. He does have a shield that blocks. Well, everything. Imagine his, <laughs> Imagine any of their recoveries. Like most of it's bad. Most of it's bad. Doomfist, Doomfist wouldn't be, okay. be bad. He'd be okay. Doomfist He'd be like, would be fun in that he, game. He would play kind of like Terry. Terry. <laughs> he would play like I play Terry, where you just spam rocket punch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so since we gave ours, fans, why don't you comment? Throw in what you if you're a Smash fan, throw in what you think would be a cool character to add. Um because uh, you know it's it's a fun thing. So say your final, say your favorite Final Fantasy character. Because yeah, which, you know, which Fire Emblem hard. character would you like added next? Yeah, with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just want another skin for Hero. You know, that's uh, what what game is he from? <laughs> Hero Quest, Dragon Quest, Dragon oh, Quest. Yeah. I want him to look more like Gohan, but less like uh, anyone else. <laughs> oh, they should add Gohan, dude. That, see, that's what I was thinking. They could have Trunks? Goku. They could have Goku, but skin variants for Vegeta and Gohan that change yeah. like some of the colors of their moves. Vegeta would be too different. I think. But go if it was Gohan and Goku, it'd be fine. But if it was Trunks and Trunks, that'd be dope. <laughs> <laughs> you just Vinny, like Trunks. Vinny, I, my two favorite fighter. characters are Trunks and uh, Gohan. And yes, those are the two characters I play in, in uh, Fighters. And then I you think should, I should play. Okay, so so I've only I've only watched Dragon Ball Z. I haven't watched any of the other Dragon Balls, but the the young Gohan or teenage Gohan was Teen really Gohan. Teen, Teen Gohan, Gohan is the best. Had so much potential. Yeah, after yeah. after the Cell Saga. Okay, well, okay. This, 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 this is pretty widely agreed upon in the Dragon Ball fan base. But after the Cell Saga, like the story should have been centered around Gohan instead of Goku. Yeah. It should have been like passed down. Okay, so I have insider knowledge from a certain someone that works oh. at our company that worked on Funimation for 10 years. Uh, so the original plan was to have Gohan uh, become the main character after Goku sacrificed himself, killing Cell. But, well, kind of killing Cell. Um, yeah, because no one dies in Dragon Ball. <laughs> well, well, I mean, Cell came back and then Gohan had to do it. But... The the thing was the fans didn't receive Gohan as well as uh, Akira Toriyama wanted them to, and so uh, he's just like, well, I'll bring back Goku, and then everyone loves <laughs> it. But the thing is, yeah, like Teen Go, Teen Gohan and High School Gohan was the best part of the whole series, hundred yeah. percent. When I, he was un- training Videl how to fly, like I like, unironically loved the Saya man. Yeah. <laughs> Those yeah, were the great Golden episodes. Warrior, Simon, yeah, Simon. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. All right, I'll be I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm you gonna don't redo get to that. Go, so. And we're back. I do when we're back. I'm the fuck fuck host. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> we're doing it live, so we're back. <laughs> um, I I feel like I can't do that because you just yelled "fuck it." We'll do it live. <laughs> Stop swearing, Aaron. Who are you? Swearing Aaron. That's what we're going to call you. Swearing Aaron, dude. So anyway, we're back. It took a quite a little break there. You need a little, a little, little bathroom break. But wanted to jump into uh, one more topic before we, before we wrap up. Just kind of talk something interesting um, about us that we've, we've you know, gotten, gotten into. Is we actually been, we played D&D quite a bit. So um, I actually... Up until last year, I had never. Well, I I had kind of played D and D once. I guess I did play D and D once. I don't know what I said. Kind of. <laughs> so I I had only played it once, and it was very. It was like one time or two, like one or two sessions. Um, but we we started playing D and D um last year when we were uh, when we were all in L A. Um, and then we would Skype call or Discord call um Vinny into uh, our sessions, and so we had you know a pretty big group playing it, but. Yeah, there um, was like ten of us. It yeah. was a lot. It was a lot. It was. I would a lot. say too many. <laughs> I, I think it was, it was too, too many. I think it, we'd have like a fight scene, and it would be like to do like a turn. It, it would be like twenty minutes at least yeah. <laughs> every time. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was a lot of people, but it, it was also just a lot of people that had never really played before. Yeah. Like I, I had a a basic understanding of how it worked, 
Um, I didn't really know my character that well, but like I, I, I understood how stuff worked. Whereas we had a lot of people who just didn't know how D and D worked at all, which is fine. Like it was, it was cool to be able to, you know, learn it together and and hang out with everyone. It was, it was, it was a fun thing. But so in in this campaign, uh, Tickety was our uh, was our DM. He was God, um, <laughs> illustrious God. <laughs> yeah, and Tickety's a, a great DM, I will say. Um, we I was had... a very forgiving God too. You were. You were. Well, I appreciate we're all we, noobs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, like half them didn't half the people didn't know what was going on. <laughs> when you start making meteors fall because people are out of character, it's like ah. yeah. <laughs> it's a bit much sometimes, yeah. 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 Um, but we had, let's see, who all who all was it was like It was Jane? Corey. Corey was in it. And he was a he was a uh gnome. Not a gnome. A gnome fighter, a yeah. Gnome fighter? fighter? Yeah. yeah. He was a, a little no, he was a, boy. I think he was a, a dwarf fighter. No, the, the mini we got for him was a dwarf because you can't find any figures of oh, gnome he was fighters. A he, was a, he was a rock gnome. A I remember. Gnome? Like, oh, <laughs> that's gnome. so much smaller than a dwarf. I yeah. think I think Corey's backstory was my favorite because it was all about how he became a bouncer for this bar as a little <laughs> tiny gnome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was amazing. Yeah. It was funny. So I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm envisioning our tables. I'm just going around. Yeah. So it was like and after Corey. Corey was was me, and so I was a half elf bard named Dirk Hardpeck, <laughs> House Hardpeck, and I, I would I would make sure everyone called me the glorious Dirk Hardpeck um, of House Hardpeck, and that was fun. Being being a bard is actually fun because you get to do a lot of silly things, um, and just make up songs that make no sense, and and yeah. you know. That was you, fun. you fell into the bards are also kind of op as fuck. Like <laughs> <laughs> they could do any spell, basically. Like not any. They could do. I, so I tried many. because because I had played it before. I tried to be like supportive and just help it help people out. You know, let yeah. people, no, you played you it know, really. Go and... I, I liked your bard for sure, but you could play it like super super like seedy like, and like just change people's perception on the world. You know, like <laughs> make illusions and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I had I had some pretty good songs too. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember them, but I had some good ones. <laughs> we, we made Aero sing all of his songs. Yeah, most of which were just renditions of pop songs or or yep. rap music, rap lyrics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <clears throat> sometimes you just have to use a template. You know, yeah, they were okay. almost always appropriate though. So kudos for mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then to my left was always uh, one of our our other video editors at the time. His name was Ashley Fegan. Uh, he was he actually joined late so he was a character yeah, he took over an npc an np yeah he took over an npc uh, a shaka storm fang what was his I don't, what was he was a fighter too right yes i apparently guessed or, his like secret or was he a ranger no he was a fighter I, apparently i guessed that he was a cat and he's like that was my whole secret i was a cat all the whole time like I transformed into a cat, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I just thought you yeah. were a cat the whole time because you said you had cat arms." And I was like, "Whatever." Like, okay. yeah, the character was supposed to be just a guide to help like railroad the players, uh, but then her dark secret was she was a were tiger. Mm. That in like a dire time of need, she might turn into a tiger. <laughs> oh, okay. But we didn't yeah. get that far. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess I just like thought that was a thing like that happened, and he's like, "How did you know my dark secret?" <laughs> <laughs> and then to to his left was clint um or wolf he's our a player manager for fuel um he was named like lichen yeah very very deceptive name <laughs> deceptive name uh what was he he was a rogue thing yeah he was a he, he was a he definitely a rogue but didn't understand what a rogue was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah he, he, was, he was one of the new ones yeah he was trying to play a rogue like a barbarian. Yeah. yeah. Dude, <laughs> Clint would be such a good barbarian, too. Yeah. Like, he doesn't even have to role play. He's just has to play Clint. He's he a barbarian. In. A literal yeah. barbarian. <laughs> and then to Clint's left was Tasmo. Yeah. He uh, was the he's our He's our GM. Yeah. His people were awful with names. <laughs> what yeah. My name my was. Name was Okay, Arnold. not you two specifically, but yeah. the rest of the party. <laughs> Tazanir. Uh, wood Elf. Gilvin Flutterbuns or whatever. Wood Elf Ranger. 
right? Is that right? Yeah, he was a ranger. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, ranger. A ranger. That's a typical Tasmo. Uh, yeah. That's what I'd guess Tasmo would pick. Yeah. Um, and then next to Tasmo was the screen that Vinny was on. <laughs> and Vinny, you were? I was a um, halfling warlock uh, named Harrison Butterscotch. Um, usually I play a rogue, but since Clint was a rogue, uh, they, we, we wanted to have some diversity in classes and, uh, I never played a warlock before. Warlock is dope. Like I played, um, I played, I played a warlock pact of the blade. Uh, and so I just would summon a death scythe, um, out of the ether and then use that as my weapon. And, you know, as a warlock, you fire Eldritch Blast like, you know, every turn. It has 400 range and like does like a solid amount of damage and you can cast it as a cantrip and you're like you know you're doing work um that was super fun i think i'm gonna play warlock from now on um if not rogue because i like being uh in the shadows but you can basically do that as a warlock so i was like yeah you make your own shadows yeah exactly like warlock is pretty dope Mm -hmm. um but i had a lot of fun this was my like third campaign but my the the second that I actually like really enjoyed um, besides like the first one I played ever second mm-hmm. one I played, I didn't, I didn't super get into it. Cause a lot of the, the players were a little, they were new, but they didn't also like take it uh, to that level. I think we actually took didn't it like to really it was, get into it. Yeah. Like I think yeah. everyone that we played with, they enjoyed it enough to, you know, have fun with it. And, yeah. and I really to be your character it. and like yeah. to do what your character would do and not just, whatever the yeah, best not just make the best decision you can think of yeah. like you're playing a video yeah. game but yeah. like to yeah. make a decision that you think your character would make and um, that drives the story too yeah so that's the best way and I, and I really really liked our group it was just it was very big so and so we, we had we had we had a couple guests but the only other consistent one that was there was jane and so jane played a druid i don't remember I don't I'll remember check. his character name. I'll check his name. Hold on, we have it. We, oh, we can go go to the Discord. Um, have oh, he was Ohm. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, he left that server. <laughs> what a oh, guy. Not a hit anymore. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. So J- Jane was a druid. Um. So yeah, I mean, it, it was fun. It was fun. I definitely want to do more D and D events in the future. Yeah. I know there's a few people in our scene that do D and D things. So I'd I'd be mm. interested whenever travel picks up again, um, if where like if we could set up like. D and D events with with some people that do it, like, like one offs. Yeah. yeah, just just have fun and do it. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I think it would be really fun to do. It's something we could totally do. Yeah, yeah. Sure. one one of the guys that uh, he worked with the Outlaws forever when they were in Frisco. Uh, he's been offering to do like because he he's a he's a GM and he's been asking to do it for for months. And I'm like, eh, maybe when we're all here, you know, maybe we can yeah. do it. And uh, but he's been he's been trying to do it. Yeah, but if if that's something you guys would be interested in, um, for those watching, you know, let us know. It'd be something yeah. we we might try to put together, uh, you know, because we like to have fun with it. Maybe um, make a D and D podcast. Yeah, D, a D and D thing would be pretty fun. I know we we got into it really big back. Uh, it was probably six months ago, um, six seven months ago, and we were really into it. We haven't been able to do it much here in Dallas yet, uh, but I'd like to for sure. Um, that's fun. I mean, we have just a lot of little silly encounters and, and it's just fun to hang out, you know, with everyone and just, just have, you know, something to, to drive, you know, what's going on. So, yeah, it was, uh, this was my first time running a campaign like of this size. Uh, so it was also my first time using one of like the prefab modules that you can buy for D and D it was called tomb of annihilation. And I will say I would not recommend it for uh, <laughs> people who are new at D and D because yeah. it's we didn't the even most, scratch the surface. It's, it's the most off the rails D and D experience I've ever heard of. It's it ridiculous. Wild. It literally just throws you into a jungle and asks you where you want to go. The jungle and, uh, is the hard. <laughs> yeah, our group yeah. was not prepared for that. Yeah, we, were, yeah. <laughs> we had yeah, no I, leadership at yeah, all. Yeah, oh, the, 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 f- f- it was like was the, the purpose beginning. of the guide at first, but then yeah. that became another clueless character. <laughs> yeah, at, it was so funny because at yeah. the beginning, you know, like you put us into a city, like we're getting ready to go out in the jungle. It's like, all right, grab anything you need before you leave. And immediately, all, everyone that hadn't played before was like, oh, they've got to have like a stash of secret weapons, like powerful <laughs> armor. Oh, I'm going to find the black market. I'm going to go find the black market. And 
you know, and so like just trying to do things around town that's like so unnecessary, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna go kill a chicken to get some XP. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, well, we gotta have to fight these people in this bar, you know, for for no reason. And then, and then we completely forgot to buy like healing healing potions and stuff <laughs> before we left. So, my, like, my favorite part of all of our sessions was when I gave you guys you, I rolled something that gave you guys a boon, and it was basically this hidden shelter filled with fresh water that you guys needed you were out in the jungle uh and you guys walked into this like secluded cave with like these hidden barrels of fresh water and the first thing you guys do is kick all the barrels over and turn <laughs> the whole place into mud and yeah. something unusable because i was just trying to give you shelter <laughs> it's like yeah. it's gotta be trapped it's gotta be trapped <laughs> it's gotta be a movie trap <laughs> knowing lose <laughs> <laughs> oh, i mean, we talked about what to do with those barrels for a while too or like mm, and then it was like 35 minutes kicking. it was like yeah. 35 <laughs> minutes because there was yeah. 10 people talking and they're like i don't know barrels kind of sus we don't want to <laughs> taste it because you know we might die and it's just yeah like, we don't have antidote because we didn't buy any it's like oh no it's fun but yeah so yeah if, if that's something again you guys are interested in seeing um we might try to put something together no promises but you know i think it'd be a pretty cool thing we could do yeah sure um, so anyways, everyone, that's it for us here on the first ever The Dallas Fuel Cast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, let us know what you thought of it, if you liked it, um, and potentially if there's any future topics you want us to cover or if there's anyone on you know, the team or staff that you maybe want to try to see us invite. Um, it's something that we wanted to try um, and, and just kind of see how it goes. We've all been interested in doing it. So just give you kind of more a, a deeper look at at us outside of just professional overwatch um and and just esports in general so uh, thanks again for tuning in and you know burn blue and cool. like comment and describe describe subscribe and hit, and ah! hit that bell and like, hit that comment, bell subscribe. hit the bell hit the bell hit the bell, like, hit the bell. Hit the bell. Fuck it, bell. Follow, follow me on twitter Grab that bell follow me on twitter it'll be across the whole screen right now only arrows twitter